Hello everyone, welcome back to Rail Signaling Academy. I hope you've all been keeping safe. So what we covered in the last video was very high level understanding of headway. But in this video, we'll go more into the details and we'll apply those concepts on conventional signaling systems. And basically we'll be understanding the intricacies of two, three, and four aspect signaling systems. So I thought it'd be a good idea to add an agenda slide where we map out everything that we'll be discussing in this video. So to begin with, we'll be talking about some basic concepts to understand two, three, four, and five aspect headways. Under those concepts, we'll be looking into sighting distance, breaking distance. Now we won't be going into too much detail, but I'll just be explaining about what the meaning of these distances are. And I think it's very important to understand this if you want to understand the full picture of headway. Then we'll be talking about two aspect headway. Then we'll be talking about three aspect headway. Three aspect headway, I'm going to much more detail because I'll be talking not just about interstation, but also station and turn back headway. And that will basically constitute the first part of this video. In the second part, we'll talk about four aspect headway and then this hypothetical five aspect headway. And then at the end, I'll be comparing all the uh, different signaling systems. So let's look at the basic understanding of sighting and breaking distance. Now what is sighting distance? Well sighting distance uh, is the distance from which when the driver sees the signal he has enough time to recognize and then interpret the signal and then decide the appropriate reaction. So you need to give driver some time to, dis to decide or to come up with the appropriate response. So that becomes sighting distance. Now this distance is a function of reaction time and it depends on a few factors. So one factor is signal aspect complexity. So if the signal aspects that you have on this on the line are very simple, like if you have just a red signal, green signal and yellow signal, so that one's easy to interpret and understand. But then there are some signaling systems which have much more complex aspects which might need longer to understand and interpret. And then there are other factors like multiple lines. If you have seven or eight lines, then well, you'll need some time to just understand whether that signal is on your line or someone else's line. Then there could be background distractions. There could be other light sources around from which you need to clearly differentiate. Then there's driver workload. You know, what if the driver has been driving for eight hours or 10 hours, then the reaction time sort of increases a little bit. He's tired. He'll need more time to understand and then the second thing is braking distance on a very high level braking distance depends on either the service brake rate emergency brake rate guaranteed emergency brake rate i will go into details about all these in some other video but for now let's just understand these are different types of brake rate and these basically are provided to us by the rolling stock manufacturer and they depend on adhesion momentum brake capacity etc and then the next one obviously is gradient if it's down gradient then you'll need long longer braking distances if it's up gradient then well it helps you to stop earlier so just a little bit on the signal aspects so this one here is uk signaling you know how i was telling you that the simpler the aspects the easier or the quicker driver can react to the signal or signaling system with more complex aspects like Canadian railways, the driver would need longer time. You know, I was looking at a document, it's from a Canadian system, and they basically require 15 seconds of reading time, whereas typically in UK signaling, it's only six seconds of reading time. And then this one is Victorian uh, signaling aspects, which is in Australia. I might be oversimplifying the UK signals here a little bit. There's possible that UK has more signaling aspects, but really the point here is to just show you that how complexity also so uh, matters a lot. So now what is two, three, four, and five aspect signaling? Well, in simple terms, when I say N aspect signaling, well, what that means is that the signal then should be able to convey N number of instructions or N different types of information. For example, for a two aspect signal, this signal can either show yellow or green. So what does that mean? There's only two types of instructions. Then there's three aspect signals. So now what happens in three aspect signals? That you can give now three different types of information if your green signal is lit or your yellow signal is lit or your red signal is lit same way with four aspect now you can give four different types of information so let's start with two aspect signaling now before we talk about two aspect signaling before I straight away jump into explaining to you how the aspects upgrade and how the aspects downgrade I would like us to go through a few of rules uh, let's look at the legend well green signal means proceed at line speed whatever is the line speed for that line yellow means 
means caution can also mean that the signal next uh, that the next signal is red so you need to stop at the next signal and well red means stop it's stop right here so main signal a well, main signal is one that can display stop aspect or danger so this is a main signal because it has this red lamp on this which can show stop aspect these signals cannot show stop aspect they can only show yellow which is caution or proceed why we need distant signals to sort of uh, warn the driver give him enough warning that the next signal could be a stop signal uh, there's another rule that only one train is allowed between two main signals plus an overlap now just a little bit about overlap it's a margin that we give after the red signal in case the train is not able to stop on time so we always have to account for margin one thing i want us to note here is that to aspect signaling it's only here to explain the concept of headway but really it is very rarely used let's look at the aspect sequence well the first scenario is uh your train arrives and then all the signals are green so it's good to go then your train crosses the first signal obviously now this signal cannot be proceed anymore because there is a train in front proceed would mean go at full speed so that's why downgrades to caution then this signal since it's a main signal now it can show a stop so it downgrades to stop this remains caution because the next signal is at stop then same thing happens here the signal downgrades to caution now if you just think a little bit it will all make sense to you why is this red because if this was green then you are basically telling the train to keep going and then caution and caution is also saying the same thing that you just keep going just be cautious but then there's a train here you're actually not allowed to go so that's why the signal remains at stop your train goes further the main signal downgrades to stop this signal is still at stop why because going back to the rule this train is still within two main signals plus the overlap and then once it clears the overlap your these two signals can now finally upgrade and go back to green if you remember the definition of headway it meant that the closest distance between two trains without having to slow down so what happens is that the, the same moment when the train clears this overlap at that very moment I can have a train reach the sighting distance. The driver says, okay, I see green signals ahead, so I can proceed at full speed without slowing down. So this is just a summary page that I created uh, in case you want to pause and think a little bit about it. Now we'll look at the time distance graph. So this is the time distance graph here. Now from the summary slide, I'll go back a little bit. I'm picking up the first scenario and I'm picking up the last scenario just so that the diagram is easier to read. So what's going on here is that your blue train, it arrives here. I plot the blue train on time distance graph. And then basically what I'm trying to do here is the moment that this blue train clears the overlap that is when ideally i want the purple train to arrive at the sighting distance what's headway in this scenario well headway is t1 minus t2 we'll look at the mathematical calculation i have uh, the picture of last scenario where you have two trains at minimum separation without having to slow down remember that the headway here will be all these distances combined divided by the operational speed you add the sighting distance first what sighting distance sighting distance like i said it's the distance which is required by the driver to interpret the signal aspect uh, that would mean that the sighting distance is operational speed into the reaction time then you have braking distance when you tell the driver next signal is going to be red you need to give the driver at least braking distance for him to be able to stop the train in a controlled manner so that becomes your braking distance v square upon 2 into the uh, deceleration which will in this case be service brake rate plus gradient obviously the sign will change if the gradient is negative or if the gradient is positive uh, a little bit of physics here uh, a gradient should be g which is acceleration due to gravity times sine which is the angle of slope this is important and this is only specific to two aspect signaling you have this thing called customer specific distance between these two signals well the distance is basically just to keep the layout economical and the minimum requirement is do not want these two signals to be close enough 
for the driver to get confused. Now overlap, there's lots of schools of thought in the overlap. Like I said, overlap is the worst case scenario. What I'm calculating here is the distance that if the driver were to apply emergency brake right at this point, right at red signal, then how long will it take for the driver to stop? And then train length. Why train length? Because you want the train to clear the overlap. That gives you the interstation headway for two aspect signaling. So if you understood two aspect signaling, it should be easier to understand three aspect because two aspect is the more complicated one. Now the rules are, well, since now signals can show three aspect, we can have green, red, and also yellow on the same signal itself. We don't need a different type of signal anymore. Green means the same, proceed at line speed. Well, yellow means caution, prepare to stop next signal is red and then red is stop now we'll when we go to the math I'll explain to you how headway is considerably better than two aspect signaling. So it's the same rule, two main signals plus overlap. And then it's commonly seen on British railways and also on Indian railways. Looking at the aspect, the first scenario, your train arrives, all the signals are green, you're okay to proceed. Then I've skipped one step here because I'm pretty sure now you can understand. So your train arrives here, this signal is red, this signal is red. Why is this red? It's because this train is still in the overlap. Now this train has cleared the overlap so this signal can be yellow caution which means you can go but the next signal is going to be red now as soon as the train clears the overlap what i'm basically saying is that hey you know what you can go at full speed no problem and then if the train were to proceed through it's going to arrive at the caution signal the caution signal says hey you need to slow down and the next signal is going to be a stop signal so the train slows slows to a stop and then you give this extra buffer or extra margin and then your train is clear of that margin so you are it's all safe same way i have the summary here if you like this format better you can pause and you can try to understand or you can go back and try to understand them uh, one by one so this is the time distance graph i've picked the first scenario and i've picked the last scenario first scenario is when blue train is approaching this route i'm plotting this on time distance graph and then as soon as blue train clears the overlap Lap. that is when this entry signal this signal becomes green again and that's when I can have this purple train arrive at the sighting distance I subtract t1 minus t2 I can pick not only just this point or any point on guideway and that will give me the headway now going back to the math of this three aspect signaling you'll see a difference here there is no that extra customer specific distance here so I have to give this breaking distance between yellow signal and red signal now why do I need this braking distance because well if it's a yellow signal what I'm telling the driver is that hey you need to slow down because the next signal is going to be a stop signal for you so I need to give him at least braking distance to be able to come to a stop and same thing here I have to give braking distance here then you have sighting distance then you have overlap then you have train length mm, if I do the headway calculation you have sighting distance into two times braking distance plus overlap plus train length all the formulae are exactly Exactly the same there's no difference now I want to talk about two more scenarios one scenario is for station and one scenario is for turn back so what's going on in the station headway now I won't be going into the same scenario one by one but it's just a summary you'll see that in the first scenario you have green signal yellow signal and red signal why red because i want the train to stop at this station so your train proceeds it goes through this signal the signal downgrades to red it proceeds this signal downgrades from yellow to red and then the train comfortably comes to a stop on the station so the train starts to dwell and when the dwell time expires when it's time for the train to depart that's when the signal turns green so now the train starts exiting and as soon as it clears the overlap your your entry signal can upgrade to green you can finally have a train approach at the full speed that it would be approaching now looking at time distance graph you'll now see that there's a big component here instead of this having a straight being a straight line now the train has comes to a stop dwells for a while and then exit and then when the train clears the overlap is when the purple train can approach so this dwell time is a big component typically your interstation headway will only be let's say two minutes 
two and a half minutes, three minutes. But then if your dwell time is five minutes, now that becomes a big component that immediately adds five minutes to the headway. Now, similar to that, there is the turn back scenario, which is also not that easy to understand, but it is important if you want to fully grasp the idea of headway. So this is the turn back headway. Now I've drawn a simple scenario here. If you see the difference here is that now you have green, yellow, but your red is on the down line because the turn back maneuver that will be performing is the train going into this turn back location and then uh, going this way. So your train crosses the signal, signal downgrades. This is yellow because this is saying that, hey, you need to slow down because net signal is red. Train continues, comes here, comes to the stop. These two signals are still yellow and red. They're not green because a train is between this section. Now your train is here. It has to dwell. The driver has to change ends or maybe it's a new driver. You have to do the changeover. And after the changeover, your train starts driving again. All well, these signals will turn green. I've shown them red. <laughs> they have to be green. So the train starts driving. And as soon as your train clears this crossover, which is what I'm showing here, as soon as it clears the crossover, now I can have this route set from green to this red signal. It could not be set before for, well, obviously a train is here. And also because this crossover has to be aligned in straight position first. Well, let me draw it here. So this crossover had to be aligned in straight for the train to exit. And as soon as the train exits, then I can have the crossover set in reverse. So then as soon as I have the crossover set in reverse, I can have this train come in. And now we look at the time distance graph for this scenario. So what's going on here is that your blue train is coming in. You have all the routes set. Now it comes here and then stops at the turn back location. I plot this on the time distance graph. Your train comes here and then stops on the turn back location. And then after it's, it's done the changeover, it starts proceeding again. When the train now goes in the other direction, I have to first wait until the point, until when the train clears this switch here. So I have to wait. And as soon as the train clears the switch, then your switches have to realign into this position. And when the realignment is done, you can now have the next train arrive. Where? Well, at the sighting distance. So if this is the sighting distance, your purple train can arrive at this point when the train clears the crossover. So then if I have to calculate the headway, well, same thing. I plot, I pick any point on the guideway. I subtract T2 minus T1. This becomes the headway. Now, just one more thing I want to discuss is that the importance of why I'm talking about the interstation headway and the turn back headway is I want to explain that with the help of a diagram here. If you see what's going on here, or if you would have also seen that in your real life, that when you're driving, <coughs> you could have many lanes. You could be driving comfortably. But if those lanes happen to merge at the end, then that kills the throughput. So what I'm really trying to explain is that the headway that you get on the line is as good as the worst headway that you have. You can have really, really good interstation headways, but then if your turn back is very poorly planned, that will kill the whole headway and that will basically ruin the whole purpose. So thank you for your time. This brings end to the part one of the video. Uh, I realized that in the last video, I did not keep the comments on. So this time I'll keep it on. Please leave your feedback there. Or if you have any questions or if you have any comments, everything will help me improve the videos. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the second part. I'll make sure that the second part is uploaded within a week so that you don't forget all the concepts that you learned here. Thank you. Thank you so much.